I used to go to this school. It was Brookmead before it was Libertas. Everything was going well, everything was blooming, businesses was here. Within that time frame, it's just like everything just went. Just faded out, the businesses, the schools, and to nowhere for anyone to go. You can't begin to understand Libertas without understanding Frazier. Frazier is a community that is transient. The community is 60% rental, so there's a lot of mobility even amongst our kids. Frazier has the largest concentration of lowest performing schools in the state of Tennessee. I think we're ground zero for education reform in the nation. When we started this school, I never knew how much work it took to begin a school. In this community, trust comes first. New is scary. So bringing this plan to a bunch of people that knew nothing about Montessori was hard. We just knew that we had a little piece of something that could help a group of children. He could clearly see with his eyes without looking at a watch that when the sun went down, another day was coming. And when the sun was rising and the day, morning was coming. How do we let these senses operate? Our hearing, our seeing, our speaking, our touching and feeling and learning how the environment works with us and we work with it. I grew up in Nashville and I went to private schools in Nashville. I didn't have the best experiences because I was the only little brown girl. <laughs> and I got asked a lot of questions like, why is your hair like that? Or do you live with your mom and your dad? Did black people swim? Do black people do X, Y, and Z? I heard all black people have Audi belly buttons. Do you have an Audi belly button? Like this was my whole childhood and I just grew up feeling like an oddity. First, I didn't realize what it was. I was like, I just know that I'm different. And I know that they're asking me these questions and not asking anybody else these questions. So I'm different. And I felt like it was bad. I couldn't put it into words because I was a child. But I was like, I must be less than or something because why are they asking me these questions in this way? Like I was so different that I needed to be pushed behind something. Which is part of the reason why I wanted to come here, because I wanted to come to an, a majority black school and offer high levels of education. Because my parents put me in majority white schools because they're like, you're gonna be able to pass the test. You're gonna do well on your standardized tests if you go to an all white school. And that's, that's how we're going to give you a leg up in the world, right? But at the, they didn't know, but at the expense of my self-esteem and the expense of me feeling normal, like me being able to accept who I was younger. Racism is just woven into the whole fabric of Memphis. People talk about Nashville all the time. But if Nashville wasn't 77% white, it wouldn't be growing the way it is. And that's just being honest. The majority of people of color, or African Americans, or my term is black, they live in Memphis. I mean, let's just be clear about that. So automatically, if you're just saying, where would the lowest performing schools be, it would be where all the black people are. That's anywhere in this country. But there's a reason why, and nobody wants to talk about the why or tackle the why. It's like achievement gap, poverty, 
blight, all that, that's just like turning on the news and seeing how they're trying to program us to think about people. I understand propaganda. I mean, there was, there's been poverty since for African Americans since we got here. We have to come and embrace people, truly empower people. We have data that proves that 75% of our kids come to, to kindergarten not ready. We do nothing to change that. 70% can read on grade level and third grade. 70% can do math in seventh grade. Less than 6% are college ready by the time they're in 11th grade. So we're not changing anything. We're just, most of the time, all we're doing is moving the smarter kids into the same schools over and over again, and then calling them great schools. When I got my master's, I worked at a private school. It was amazing. Eighth graders scoring higher than I did on the SAT. <laughs> and I was a pretty smart guy. <laughs> the facilities were beautiful, and the orchestra and the choir, it was just grandiose. How can you give a child who lives in poverty the exact same amount of money that you give a person that lives in a $300,000 income household and expect it to be, you know, the same results? Most of the low-performing schools in Fraser, all these buildings need major repairs. Libertas need a roof. I mean, you see the buckets in the, in the hallway, so our kids have to see that. Or you're walking by houses every day that's boarded up, that's been vacant for 20 years and haven't never been torn down, and you're walking by it every day. So that does something to your psyche. It's hard to get out or to break this a cycle of poverty, like the mental cycle of poverty. But if the child sees that they can do more and they have tangible examples and then they know what to say, they know what to do, they know how to express themselves, I feel like that'll unlock so many doors for them. And I see so much potential in several of my kids and they have such hard lives. And I'm hoping that I can pour into them and they keep it. The real mission of the school, right? The aspects of wonder, work, and love that we can impart, and they could really impart on us. The children and their families are a gift to us because, I mean, they're the reason why we're here. There's a process to everything in Montessori. We explicitly teach, like, how to roll a rug. And a rug is so important because it has my work on it. And I make a big deal about everything, like, this is my work. And I, it took me a long time to do it. And it would really hurt my feelings if somebody stepped on my work. So we always walk around people's work. So that teaches them not to step on the rugs. That's teaching them respect again. Making a big deal about the work, it's my work. It's important to me. Then it's instilling an importance in their work to the children. The model itself lends itself to students taking accountability at a very early age for their own behavior. It calls to the children, the work, they can't resist it. You'll see little kids rub their hands up against the wall. It's called a sensitive period. Like you're in a dark room and there's a flashlight on this one thing and you just, you see everything else but you're just so drawn to that one thing. These kids, if they're interested in something, they delve really deep. These young, young kids, if they're interested, I had one child who was like, when I jump up, I'm pulled back to the ground. Why am I pulled back to the ground? That's gravity, kid, let's go in there. So then we just get really deep with it. I was skeptical at first because I didn't see the seats arranged in a certain way, a structure and order that the traditional school setting has. Since, since that's what was normal to me, I assumed that that was the only way to teach. Our main focus is on making sure that they not only become good students, but good people. My husband is the one that told me about Libertas. I think he was in kindergarten when he brought this word fortitude home. 
he used it in a sentence and he used it properly. And I said, well, what does fortitude mean? He said, well, that's mom, that means even though there's things around you that seem hard to be able to handle, you still push forward and, and do what you need to do. My husband passed away when he was in first grade. A lot of times, communities get stigmatized. Schools can change that. An excellent school in a community brings up the whole attitude of a community, of the children, of the parents, of the whole family, how people view a whole community. If a school's excellent, the neighborhood is seen as excellent. People are now driving from all over the other parts of the city to come to this one public school that's in Fraser. It is providing a, an asset and value in the most unorthodox, unanticipated way. <laughs> 